Welcome to Desk Careers. I'm so excited to bring another incredible guest. This morning, we are meeting with Chwetawahi, who is the Associate Vice President of People and Culture at the Transnational Academic Group. Today, we are going to be speaking to Shweta, not about her current role at Transnational Academic Group, but about her previous role as the founder of Shweta Wahi Creations, where she sold clothes across three continents. Welcome, Shweta. I'm so excited to have you with us today. Thank you so much, Maria. It's a pleasure to be here. I mean, there's so many things I know I want to get into and, and discuss with you. But before I do, I'm going to take you down that traditional journey where I take all my guests, and that, that takes us back to those early adolescent years. Can you remember a time when you were probably hearing, you know, the same question that we all hear? I think it's part of growing up, the what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you remember hearing that question from adults in your life? Gosh, all the time. Um, though it was a little different for me, uh, Maria, I just, I was constantly caught drawing in the classroom, whether it was my science class, uh, Hindi, any language class, I was just sitting and drawing in my notebook. So um, it became an organic transition uh, where everyone sort of said that, okay, she's going to be doing something creative when she grows up. And that's sort of how I came to uh, fashion. And that's really incredible because I know that I have aspiring fashion designers and and one of their concerns is what if I'm not good at drawing? What, is that a paramount thing that you found because you were always going back to drawing that it helped you that you tapped into that talent or when you did finally make it to the career, was it as important as many think it is? Um, you know, at the end of the day, Fashion is so vast, much like any industry, there are so many different roles that you can actually get involved in. So it really comes down to what part of fashion is the student interested in. Um, for me, I am a creative at heart. Uh, so at that point, drawing, yes, it was important to me. But if you want to be a designer, um, you don't necessarily have to be fantastic at drawing. Uh, there are other things that you actually need to be able to look into. So you have to understand garment construction. You have to understand, you know, fabrics, um, draping. Uh, there's so much more to it than just drawing. So I'd say don't don't let something like that uh, hold you down because there are ways to get around it. That's brilliant. Now, let me take you through some of the things I hear from young people who really enjoy being creative and they want to be taking subjects like art. Often they get stopped by some of the gatekeepers in their life who tell them, you know, that's not really an academic course. You really shouldn't look into this in further detail. You know, maybe do that as a pastime. Did you find that when you were doing it, that was common as a comment for you? Was that part of the reason why you left the industry to do what you're currently doing right now? Wow. So this is, this has a pretty heavy answer. <laughs> it was a pretty heavy question. Um, so just in terms of my ethnic background, I am Indian. I studied in an Indian school. Culturally, um, there are, you know, two, two sort of pathways that you'd always take academically. Either you become, you know, a doctor or get into the sciences with engineering, or then you become a lawyer or a business person getting into your family business. So I do remember that, you know, when I'd be out meeting other parents um, and their uh, children, the question would come up and they'd say, okay, oh, you're doing arts. And I'd have to tell them, yes, I'm doing fine arts. And they'd be like, wait, finance? I'm like, no, fine arts, drawing and painting. And the presumption would, uh, presumption would always be, oh, okay, yeah, you'll make a good housewife. So it's, it's important to, you know, be a creative. This is nice. Yeah. And they just sort of, you know, try to, um, what's the word, just console me almost as if it was a bad decision. Um, so uh, I did get a lot of that, especially back in the day. This is a good 15, 20 years ago. So um, it, it, it was very prevalent. But uh, as I progressed, you know, in um, my own career, people started taking it more seriously, depending on, you know, the various milestones that I had hit. Um, but your question on actually leaving the fashion industry, that was more uh, as a result of me finding what I really enjoyed doing. 
So as I mentioned, you know, I always wanted to, I, I was a creative, I was always told that this is, you know, this is something that you're going to do, you excel at it, great. Um, but what I found down the line was that I truly enjoy working with people. And um, this happened after I had done a number of fashion shows. I started getting invited to speak to universities and colleges. And as I was talking to students, I realized that there was there were some key mistakes or key learnings that I had. And I enjoyed sharing them with students. And that's why I eventually ended up leaving um, fashion and joining uh, education. And I, this is what I love about our spotlight interviews is that we're not just looking at a job in isolation to life and having these conversations, I think is really important for young people to understand that we're not signing up for one job for the rest of our life. You know, our careers will evolve and, and will revolve around our interests and our interests will change, aren't, aren't they, as we, as we grow older. But I think regardless, that creative part of what you enjoyed has probably stayed with you even in your current role. And you're probably using it maybe slightly different to how you would before, but let's, let's go into the industry. I know that young people are always really concerned that will I make it, you know, how cutthroat is the fashion industry and what were some of your top tips after, after being a professional who didn't just focus on one continent? I mean, Hey, Shweta, you went out and tackled three. So what did you learn on that journey? Gosh, Maria, I could write a book. <laughs> it was, uh, it's, it's been quite a journey. I mean, when I started, um, I had completely immersed myself into every aspect of fashion back when I was 12. Um, and my parents, you know, I, I really have them to thank because they created that environment for me to be able to ex uh, to expose myself to not only just fashion and drawing and, you know, being creative, but they um, gave me certain opportunities to go out and study after school um, and take courses and do different um, short programs. So uh, I was at, you know, the art center in Jumeirah that school is like 20, 30 years old. Um, I've done all kinds of uh, courses there in like mosaics and fashion illustration, garment construction, um, fabrics, glass painting, oil painting. Um, and then from there, uh, I went on to do fine arts and I launched my label literally from my dorm room. And this was a matter of uh, consequence, actually. It was just... I started volunteering for various shows, um, charity-based fashion shows within the university. And they, they had a slot open and they asked me because, you know, I always carried my little notebook around with my drawings and they said, hey, do you have anything made? And I was like, no, but I can have it done before the show. If, if you'll give me a slot, I'll take it. And I put together uh, 10 pieces in less than 10 days, had these models walked down the runway and just took it from there. And that was pretty much my first learning that just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Just go and take every opportunity that you can. Um, I ended up working for, he's dubbed the Alexander McQueen of Canada. This is Evan Bedell. He was also the winner of Project uh, Runway Canada season one. Um, I ended up working for him for a couple of uh, years and it was once again a result of me reaching out to him on Facebook and saying, hey, these are the five things that I can do. Can I please come work for you? And he said, yes. So it's really just putting yourself out there um, that really makes a difference. The industry in itself is incredibly cutthroat. Um, it's competitive. You meet all kinds of people. Um, you do have to be a little careful. I mean, it's it does sometimes get catty to the point that you know people are cutting each other's dresses before they go on to a <laughs> runway so so you can have situations like that but um it it really depends on where you are what you're doing um it's it's way beyond me being able to tell you you know just in this uh, in this one answer 
<laughs> wow. So I almost feel that young people shouldn't just be thinking in terms of the classroom. It, it almost sounds like they need to be thinking about their emotional well-being and being really consciously aware of what their vulnerable spots are in, in you know, being in the industry. So what are some of the soft skills that you would encourage someone interested in going into this industry to develop? Sure. So um, you actually hit the nail on the head with something over there that I'd really like to address. And it's just, you know, um, having the ability to distinguish between criticism and constructive criticism. And when I say criticism, I mean, you know, sometimes you have to really look at the intention as to why something is being said to you. Um, and is it malintended or is it something that the person saying because they want you to get better? So you do need to have thick skin. Um, you need to be able to take things in from one year and out the other. Uh, I remember I was doing a very well reputed uh, fashion week over here um, in Dubai, and there was a celebrity who took one look at me and decided she wasn't going to walk the ramp for me. Um, and it had nothing to do with my clothes. It was just because, you know, I was this young nobody. Um, and it's it's a different thing that she felt when she walked down the ramp for other designers. I guess karma does have a way of working itself out. But um, um, sorry, naughty joke there. But uh, But, you know, it's just you really have to be able to stomach things like that. Um, not everyone's going to like your work. People are going to have an opinion about it. You need to be able to filter out and see why is it that they're saying this. Um, and then constantly try to improve. Uh, you know, you need to not only look at yourself and your skill set, but also look at where the industry is going. Um, try to understand, you know, the role that you're in today. Is it going to be relevant tomorrow? So continue doing your research. But more than anything else, um, no matter what path you pick, there are certain things that stay with you. So I'm talking about your attitude, uh, your professionalism, your integrity. If you say that you're going to do something, make sure you stick to it and you deliver because that's ultimately what contributes to your reputation and keeps you going. Wow. So very similar to other industries is, mm -hmm. is be, you know, being having that professional etiquette and, and keeping to it. Take us down your academic journey as a fashion student. What was it like? What were some of the things that you learned at university or in fashion school that were definitely big support ideas or ideals that you used in industry? And what were some of the things that you could only learn on the job that really had nothing to do with your education? Sure. So um, in terms of formal courses, uh, it started off with, you know, the short courses at the art center, as I mentioned. But then I actually took a trip down and did summer school at um, uh, the University of the Arts in London. Um, so I did a course on fashion styling and art and design um, from Central St. Martin's. Uh, that was just a couple of months. Um, it was very helpful. I was 15 at the time and uh, it just gave me a bit more exposure because it wasn't just, you know, drawing and painting. We were actually going, creating outfits, styling them, doing the makeup for them um, and then presenting lookbooks at the end of the entire thing. So uh, it was it, it was an actual practical project, uh, if you will, which uh, further cemented, you know, the idea of wanting to do fashion. Um, I then went on to actually do visual arts at York University. So I specialized in printmaking and photography. This doesn't have much to do with fashion, and yet it's very relevant because um, with print, you have textile design. Um, and of course, with photography, then you get that styling element um, that comes back in. I was also at the same time uh, doing short courses with another college in Toronto while I was doing my degree. So I went on to do image consulting, um, garment construction, and a couple of other things there um, that once again, just gave me that technical knowledge that I needed. And I'm just going to stop here for a second and mention that it's really important to actually understand the technicals when you're becoming a designer, or even, you know, if you're getting into the garment side of fashion, understand what it takes to make a garment, even if you're running the business side of things, because 
when you're sitting down with your tailors and your designers and you're telling them you want something to be done and if they say no it can't be done you can actually then tell them no you can do it so it's important to have that technical knowledge and background um and i found that really helped me when i was designing my uh, clothes and my label i'm happy that you touched then on the tailors because in a recent interview i interviewed the owner of of a series of tailoring shops here in the united arab emirates and one of the things he told me is you know for any of those students that really want to go and become fashion designers tell them to come and spend some time at the tailoring shop they need to sit with my tailors because sometimes they draw something and they don't understand what it's like to be making it so if they could observe they would gain insights that they can't gain at school would you say that 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 is true that you find or that you found going to the tailoring shop listening to the woes of the tailors really identifying and then educating them on the things that you've learned that they might not have access to absolutely i would wholeheartedly encourage it especially if we're in the uae i mean we've got so many tailors around there's so much access to um that knowledge and there's no place better to start than the tailors um they also always have scraps of fabric and this is how i started in uh, high school my mom would go into the tailoring shops and bring back bags and bags of extra fabric um and then you know uh, she i still remember i think i was about 10 when i got my first uh, sewing kit but uh, sewing machine sorry um but it's all about you know draping it against the mannequin first drawing it out trying to drape it on the mannequin see if it works you know you you really get that hands on knowledge when you're working with the tailors so i would wholeheartedly encourage that would you say that learning how to sew is an important skill for a fashion designer is it necessary kind of like the drawing skill is it necessary for them to know how to maneuver a sewing machine and if they didn't is it something that you would think no no you got to learn how to do this it's really important for you to learn this skill you absolutely need to know how to do it um it's it's sort of like a rite of passage um the reason why i say this is because once again it's not just one sewing machine there are so many different kinds of stitches there are so many different kinds of machines um you know with your industrial grade machines as well if you can get access to those um there's nothing like it because at the end of the day you're not going to know how to treat a fabric if you don't know how to stitch it and construct it so yes drawing is important sewing is important garment construction is important do you need to be good at it you don't need to be great at it but you need to understand it there's nothing like making your own piece of clothing to really appreciate how clothes are made let's talk about some of your highlights um i know that you launched your label from your dorm room which is what you said and then you were also a senior at the business school and you were invited to show that collection mm-hmm. were those the major highlights or would you say there were things kind of like behind the scenes that only you really saw but were definite milestones for your career i think especially with this first show that we're talking about you know the charity showcase um I did my own hair and makeup my own you know fitting of the models right before telling them how I wanted them to walk down picking my own music um gosh just every single aspect of that segment was mine to do alone because I had no one to help me and I think just seeing all of that come together and move down the runway that those first you know 4 5 minutes was the highlight of my life walking out on stage after was actually really frightening i'm very shy in that sense um and it's possibly one of the things that i did not enjoy about fashion i just do not enjoy walking down the runway but seeing your clothes move down and come back in it, it's just a different high altogether so i want to take you on a different twist something that i didn't prepare you for but i think is a really important part of this world Mm-hmm. the fashion industry is is one of those industries where you know people of influence tend to use to use as messages to the people for example in the time of president obama his wife michelle obama would make an effort to reach out to the 
younger, not so recognized fashion designers and wear their clothes. We see very often the royal family being very humble in the selection of their clothes. And, and it, it really does kind of surround almost, I think, a political message sometimes and what's being said. Would you say that those were things that you learned at university or they just kind of happened to exist in the world? So this was actually a huge um, part of what I was doing when I launched my label. And it really came down to how you feel when you're wearing clothes, right? And I'm talking about self-confidence here. So I actually had a tagline and this is why I went and did image consulting because I just feel like we tend to put so much pressure on ourselves um, with the idea of how we should look and, you know, fitting into certain sizes and garments. So um, my tagline was with comfort comes confidence and confidence is always in style. And this is something that I tried to push when I was working with clients. I would design for them, for their body. Um, and the reason why I brought this aspect in was because I just found that, you know, it's ultimately you want to be able to have some sort of impact. And growing up, you know, I went through my own um, insecurities as I grew up uh, in terms of the clothes I was wearing or how I looked. And so there was a huge aspect in that sense to what I was doing. Um, is this something I learned in the classroom? No, it's something that came as I was dealing with people. And this is another thing that I leave with students. You know, you need to be able to talk to um, as many people as you can, talk to people within the industry and also talk to your immediate peer group, your friends, understand what it is that they feel when they think of clothing or, you know, just put in some buzzwords and see what they come back with. And that's your best um, uh, market intel, I guess, because that will really inform how you uh, pave your pathway moving forward with your own designs. I'm sure you've seen the industry really evolving and, and the access that young designers have to their audience is much, would you say that it's much easier than it would have been, say, a decade ago? You know, right now, anyone can launch an Instagram store and sell their merchandise online directly to their audience, whereas mm -hmm. maybe before you needed to have access and privilege being connected to larger labels. Would you say that now is it really a good time for young designers not to feel disappointed if they can't get into those bigger labels and that they should, you know, launch out just like you did from your dorm room and do their own thing and just go straight to their audience. Is that something that you encourage or do you still think they should try and, you know, learn the way that you did and, and, and find a job within a larger label? So I think it ultimately depends on, what exactly they want to do within fashion. Um, when you're running your own label, there is a huge business aspect to it. If you've got a partner who can run the numbers for you, then nothing like it. Um, but if you're taking care of all of that yourself, then it's really important to educate yourself within business. Um, give yourself that foundation. Um, you can always pick up technicals and you know do short courses on the creative side of things. Uh, and this is if you decide to do something of your own. Just keep in mind that when you're launching something of your own, um, it takes a lot more than when you're working for a big name company. Because when you're working for another label, you're just carrying out one function. When you're working for yourself, you're carrying out 100 different functions. There's no concept of taking breaks. And, you know, it's, it's really a 24-7 sort of thing. Um, in terms of accessibility today uh yes it is much better it's a positive that you know we can launch things in a minute you've got a profile up on instagram and social media and that's great but it's also heavily saturated and for every success story that you see there are probably a thousand that haven't made it so as they say in garment construction measure twice cut once right so you need to just make sure that when you're launching yourself You've done enough research and you've got all your ducks in a row before you set out. 
you've said some really interesting things and, and wearing the lens of a, a young person really wanting to learn more about the industry, especially at secondary school when they're trying to get experiences of work onto their portfolio. What I'm hearing you say is spend time at the tailoring shops, learn how to sew, get your ideas on paper, build up your confidence, really learn to identify who you are, develop that thick skin, and of course, become more focused on, do I want to just be that creative person or will one day I want to launch into my own? And if that's the case, then I should really be looking at some of the business elements that I wouldn't be exposed to as a student. What else can a young person do to gain experiences of work other than shadowing a designer, of course? So um, if we're just talking local right now, the first thing I do is, you know, head into the various boutiques that we've got um, in the city, drop by, drop your CV, ask if you can, you know, volunteer and just do some, you know, uh, errands for them. Um, try to approach publications, uh, offer to help at photo shoots. You can actually reach out to photo studios, um, you know, understand what goes into a photo shoot. Not, it doesn't have to just be fashion. You could literally go into any studio and try to understand how they do their in-studio shoots. Um, gosh, there's, there's so much that you can do, but even with the various fashion shows that you have taking place um, in the city, you know, get, get online, see what's coming up, approach the organizers. At the end of the day, it's just about putting yourself out there ask the question, ask if you can help, because if you don't ask, you're not going to get the opportunity. I'm almost hearing you in what you've told us today is reach out to some of those uh, students in fashion design. They, they need help. I'm just thinking back to what you were doing. I'm sure they would be welcoming that help. So Shweta, what do you miss the most about the industry now that you're no longer directly involved in the industry? I'm miss the creative element. <laughs> I definitely miss the creative side of things. Um, I miss the rush before a show. Um, of course, you know, when we started with the charity shows and the student level shows, that was one thing, but it eventually went on to Mercedes Benz Fashion Week Africa. Um, and then, you know, that's when you've got the assistants coming in and you know everything's taken care of. Um, but you're still, you know, there's, there's a certain buzz backstage um, and I haven't been able to get that feeling since back in 2013. So I do. Wow. <laughs> quite a time, quite a time. Can you see yourself rejoining the industry in your future? Possibly. I do my, I do see myself going back, but probably from an educational standpoint, um, I would love to actually go back and start doing lectures, um, in any part of fashion, really. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. I can keep going on, but I know we have a live audience waiting for me in the background, probably thinking, come on, Miss B, let's get this over with. So I'm <laughs> going to bring it to a wrap in our virtual world. Thank you so much for being with me today, Shweta. It's been a really insightful conversation. I know anyone listening to this is going to really appreciate some of the things that you've shared with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. And that brings us to the end of another incredible conversation. Today, we were speaking with Shweta Wahi, who is the Associate Vice President of People and Culture at Transnational Academic Group. She was talking to us about her previous role as a fashion designer with Shweta Wahi Creations, where she sold clothes to three continents across the globe. Thank you for watching and we will see you all at our next Desk Careers Digital Spotlight.